Hey everyone, DiaboKiller124 here, and today we are doing our inventory tutorial. Uh, now you might have seen a preview on it on uh, YouTube. I posted it a little earlier today. Uh, I also did make my screen a little smaller for you guys. It's 720p resolution now. Uh, well, uh, 1280 by 720. Um, hopefully so you guys can just see it a little easier when you're looking at the YouTube screen. Um, but, yeah. So I'm just going to show you uh, the example again, um, and we'll get started after that. Okay, so we have a health level and a mana level, and now we have mana, potions basically, and health potions. The red is health and mana is blue. So when you go over and pick them up with your little finger guy, um, it picks them up and they just kind of disappear. Well not really. If you go to your inventory, which to get to that you hit I. Um, you can see they're actually in the inventory as we pick them up. You know, watch, you'll see if I pick this one up, it'll go to the inventory. So now, uh, if we want to use uh, one of our health potions or health level ups, whatever you want to call it, uh, we just click on it. We simply click on it, and it'll increase our health level from 10 to 15, and so on and so forth. Now we're at 30, you know, and if we want to use our mana, we just click that, and it increases. Uh, now, if we want to move objects around, uh, we'll just check this little move objects around checkbox, which I made a checkbox, I think it looks cool. Anyways, um, uh, now we can select and move them all around. You know, you can't move them where one already is, because that's impossible. Um, I mean, you could make it like that, but then what would be the point of an inventory? Um, yeah, so you can move them around, and then when you want to use one again, you just uncheck it, and then you can use them. And now I have 35 health and 35 mana. So to close your inventory, you just hit I again, and then you can keep running around. Well, you can run around while you're in your inventory. You can make it so you can't, but just to keep things sim more simple, I just made it so you can. Um, so yeah, so uh, I'm going to try to keep these uh, videos to about 20 minutes each. I'm not sure I'm gonna, what we're going to need, but um, yeah. So why don't we go ahead and get started. So I'm creating a new action script 3.0. This is 3.0 uh, file. So I'm gonna click OK. And now uh, I'm just gonna go. I'm gonna move my inventory one over here. No, I'm not. Sorry, I was gonna use it as a reference, but don't need to do that. Uh, so now I'm just gonna want to create all the objects I had in my old library. And just to make things simple, I'm just gonna kind of look back and forth. I'll recreate all the items though, so you can see me. So you can see me, and you know, see how I do it. So first things first, I'm going to make my character. Um, I know it was a cool creature, but I'm just going to make it a circle for this tutorial. Uh, I'm going to delete the invisible uh, outline of it. And now I'm just going to F8 to create a symbol out of it. And I'm setting the registration on it to the bottom, just in case we do later tutorials with this. And I'm going to name him character. Simple as that. So I'm going to click OK. And now we have our character. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, now we have our character. Um, and that's that. So I'm just going to leave the character on the screen. Um, we're not going to have to move him off the screen ever. Um, but next up, well, let's create our health and our mana potions. So I'm just going to take... Uh, little dots, make two of them, one for health, one for mana. Change one to blue and the other one to red. And we have our health and mana. So now I'm going to select one, hit F8, and convert it to a symbol. The registration is going to be on the top, uh, middle, sorry, uh, very middle. And this one's going to be called mana. And we are going to export for action script. And the class will be mana and leave the base class the same. Uh, now, if you don't see any of this, uh, just click on the little advanced button right here, and you can export it for action script. Uh, in doing this, will allow us to actually use action script with us to add it to the uh, to the screen, because we're just going to have it in our library. So I'm going to click OK, and I'm going to do the same thing for our health potion, except this time name it health, and export for action script class health. Okay, so now that we got those created, we can just delete them. We don't need them on the, uh, on the, I'm trying to think of the right name for it, on the, 
Oh well, on the scene or whatever. Because uh, we're just going to keep them in our library and through action script we'll call them to the stage. Stage, that's what it's called. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, I guess uh, for now, that's all we need. Except for inventory slot, of course, I guess. That's kind of a big one. So, you know, I'm just going to make me an inventory. Uh, it's going to be a very crude one, but it'll be an inventory. Sorry, I kind of want it to look... That does not look like... That does not look right. I'm sorry. There. That's... Fine. I'm sorry. <laughs> Let's change the color to, like... Green. Okay. Lighter green. <laughs> sorry, guys. Lighter green. Okay, there we go. That's good enough for me. So I'm going to just convert it uh, to a... Actually, I'm going to resize it. I'm going to make it 45 um, by 45. Kind of looks like a piece of toast. Uh, but 45 by 45. And I'm going to create that, uh, convert that to a symbol F8 again. Registration, this one will be on the top. And uh, symbol name is going to be M I N V S L O T, just like that. Uh, slot S is capitalized. And that's also going to be exported for action script, class in the slot. Uh, and I'm naming it in slot just to make it a little more oomph, oomph, sorry, just to make it a little more uh, easier to remember than just in because we might use in the variable later. So now I'm going to delete this off the screen also, and um, that's oh uh, well. Let's just create the menu too. I'm sorry. Uh, now for the menu, um, I'm just going to create a new layer for the menu, uh, not for any specific reason, just. Just uh, so I don't mess up my character at all. I'm actually going to move character off screen a little. And now for my menu, I'm just going to take uh, my rectangle tool and I'm going to draw it around. Oops. Just like that, kind of. And since I know my uh, size and width, uh, width and height of my stage, I'm just going to resize it like that. Uh, mine's 550, the width, um, by... Uh, 400, I think. <laughs> yeah, no, that's not right. It's 550 by 400, which I'm gonna. Oh, sorry, I had it locked my width and height. So it's I'm I'm gonna make it a little smaller actually. So instead of 550, I'm gonna do 530, and the height instead of 400, I'm gonna do 380, just to make it a little smaller. And now I'm going to click on it. I have it all selected. And I'm going to click my align box. To get that, you go to window. Um, mine's already there, so I don't really know. But window. Oh, well. Um, if, if, you don't, if you don't see this little thing that looks like an align, just look for it somewhere and you should see it. It'll be under color, align info all that good stuff. But uh, I'm going to align this and I'm going to align to stage and I'm going to make it centered and centered. So now it's centered completely and you can see a little white on the sides. Uh, so now that we have this selected I'm going to ch choose color now and uh, for A which stands for alpha I'm going to lower this down to about 75. So now we can see what's under it. And uh, that's I think that's a really cool oops. I think that's a really cool effect because, uh, you know, you can see, like, if character was under it, you know, you would see that it was under it. Um, but now we're going to convert it to a symbol, so hit, make sure you're selecting it and hit F8. And now uh, registration will be in the middle and name this menu. And export it for action script, class menu. Click OK and delete that off the stage. And now with my layer 2 blank, uh, with nothing on it, I'm going to change that to actions. And on layer 1, I'm going to create a text that says health, uh, just like that. And it's going to be read only. It doesn't need an instance name because it's only to be read. And uh, I'm just going to make a little thing here. And this is read only, but we're going to give it a name of H level. 
for health level. And I'm just gonna hit control and s drag it down to duplicate it and return this one to mana and just adjust it and then change uh, H level to M level just like that okay so now that I have those two uh, we're, re we're ready to begin coding we're, we're re ready. yeah we're ready to begin coding so now uh, also give your character an instance name of character just go to the property select it go to properties and then it's a the name character sorry um, so now we're ready to start going to our actions so now to get to actions you go to window actions or hit F9 or for me I have an action as frame uh, which I always keep handy so now we really don't need to look at the screen for ever I guess um, so I'm just gonna make my actions a little bigger so you guys can see what I type and I have more room to type. Uh, first, we're going to want to import the uh, flash event, uh, which allows us to create events like uh, an event listener and stuff. So we're going to type import flash dot events dot event. And so now that we have that imported, uh, we'll go on creating all of our stuff. So we're going to want to create a few variables, and the first variable we're going to create is our uh, inventory slots. Uh, and this is going to be an array, so we're just going to, for the inventory slot name, uh, we're just going to give it a name of slots. And it's going to be called array, just like that. And it's going to be a blank array for now. Uh, we'll uh, populate the array later, so we don't need to worry about that for now. Uh, so we're also going to want to create a objects array to hold all of our objects. So this is going to be called uh, objects, to keep it nice and simple. And it's also going to be an array, an empty array for now. Um, we're also going to want to, um, we're going to create an inventory uh, array, or not array, sorry, just an inventory variable. Uh, we'll just leave it just like that. And we'll also create a menu1.menu equals new menu. So what we just did here was we set uh, menu1 the variable menu1 uh, is a menu and it's a new menu so basically it took the class menu from over here which we uh, used when we created it remember uh, we selected export fraction script and it's class is menu so we made menu1 uh, a new menu so now now we have that and now if we wanted to show the menu uh, we would just do add child menu menu1 actually and if we tested it Oops. And there was an error. Oh. Ah, can't see anything. Let's see what that area is. Line 6. Menu 1. Oh, I put a dot menu. It needs to be a semicolon menu. So var menu 1, semicolon menu. Or a colon, I'm sorry. Colon menu. And we test it, and not found. So if we comment this out for now, because we're not going to use that. Uh, you can see we have our menu. Perfect. <laughs> um, so you, our menu is kind of off base because it's positioning it in default position. Uh, but no need to worry about that for now. Oh, okay, sorry. Uh, so now I'm just going to delete my import uh, comment. And we're also going to delete the add child because we don't need to add the child yet. Uh, we're going to create a, another uh, variable. This one's going to call menu open. So if the menu is open or not, um, so we're just going to set that to false for now. Uh, we're also going to create two more variables called before y, before x, and before y. Well, we're not going to set these yet. These are for later. And before y. Uh, now we're going to make a function called init, which means initiate. Uh, and this is just to keep things kind of a little more organized. I don't really uh, we won't really use it for everything, but, uh, you know, yeah, so, uh, we're going to want to add a, an event listener to the stage, uh, and we're going to be listening for a key press. So to do that, we're going to do stage dot add event listener, and then, uh, it's going to be a keyboard event, 
and then it's going to be a uh, key. It's going to this. Uh, it's going to listen for when a key is pressed, and it's going to call the function key pressed. So now we're going to want to create that function uh, key pressed, and to create that function, uh, all we're going to oops, all we're going to want to do is you know type function uh, key pressed. And we're gonna want to do event, oops, event, event, just like that. And we're gonna make it void. So this is how it should look now: function key pressed and in parentheses event colon event. And after the parentheses, it's void. So I'm a colon void. Uh, and we did this because uh, it's an event, so it's waiting to. This function's only called uh, pretty much when there's an event. An, an event. Uh, so yeah, uh, we're gonna want to create a new variable in here called key, and it's gonna be a uint, and it's gonna equal event dot key code. So it's basically pulling the key code uh, that the event called. So like if I press the a key, it would give me key code sixty five, um, and then that's what we would get from here. So key would basically be sixty five. Uh, so now we're going to want to check which key it was, so we're going to type switch, and then key. And what switch does is, is if uh, it's not the first case, which for us it'll be keyboard left, so if, if they don't press keyboard left, it'll go on to the next case, which is keyboard right, and if it's not that, it'll go to keyboard up, and if it's not that, etc. And, um, you know, if it's not any of them, it won't, oops, drop my mic. And if it's not any of them, you know, it won't go, it won't do it at all. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to do case keyboard dot left. And in this case, uh, we're going to do character dot x minus equals 5. So basically, we've done this before. Uh, the character will move over to the left. And then we're going to type break. And after the break on the first case, um, we need to capitalize the K in keyboard.left, just so you don't forget. After the first case, uh, we need to break it, which means uh, breaking it apart, basically. Um, we're going to do case keyboard.write. And this is going to be character.x plus equals 5. And we're also going to break it. Then we're going to do case keyboard.up. Um, and then we're going to do character dot x minus equals 5. Oops, sorry, don't know what I'm thinking. Character dot y minus equals 5. And break. And case keyboard dot down. And this character dot y is going to plus equals 5. And then we're going to break. And now we're done. Um, for now. We're also going to have a break later, which will be case 73 uh, for I to open the menu up. Or we might do, like, escape or something. Uh, I is just for inventory, but later we might have to change it. Um, but I'm going to stop the tutorial here, guys. I'm almost at 20 minutes. Uh, so, guys, uh, come back soon for the next part. Uh, I'll show you what we have done right now really quick. So let's test it. And it doesn't work. So, yeah. Um, but, yeah, guys. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> uh, we'll fix it in the next one. Don't worry. Bye, guys.